Hello everyone. Welcome to Informatica support videos. This video is on passing an inode parameter value from one data task to the next in a task flow. I am Sharath Karthik. I am a part of Informatica Global Customer Support. Without further ado, let's get started. The agenda is pretty simple. First, let's take a look on what is an inode parameter followed by the demonstration on how to create an inode parameter and how to pass an inode parameter from one task to another in a task flow. What is an inode parameter? An inode parameter is a placeholder for a value that stores a counter or a task stage. Inode parameters act as persistent task variables. The parameter values are updated during the task execution. First, let's create an inode parameter. Click this parameter icon. Here you'll be finding a tab, inode parameters. Click on the plus icon to create an inode parameter. Add a name to the inode parameter. Select the data type as per your requirement. Select the retention policy which will determine when to store the value of inode parameter and the aggregation type on which value to be stored in the inode parameter. Click OK to save the inode parameter. Since I've already created an inode parameter, I'm clicking on cancel. So here you can find the inode parameter that you have created. So, to store the inode parameter, add an, add an expression transformation in between your source and the target. Click on the expression in the expression tab. Click on this plus icon to add a new field. Create a new field by adding a name and the data type of the field and click OK. Then, here you will be finding a configure button. Click on the configure to add an expression to the field that you have created. So here, to store the values, click on the built-in functions, select special functions. Under that, you will be finding four set functions. Use set count variable to increment the variable value based on the row type. The setMax variable will return the maximum of the values. The setMin variable will store the minimum of all the values. The set variable can be used to store the inode parameter with the value with the value of the expression that you that you've added. So here I am using set count variable to add the inode parameter. Click this drop down. From this, select the parameters. Here you will find inode parameters. Expand it. You will find the inode parameter that you have created. Click on the inode parameter to add to the expression. Clicking on validate will give you whether the expression is valid or not. Click OK to save the configuration. Click on save to save the mapping. Then create a mapping task for the mapping. Add a task name. And select 
the runtime environment in which the mapping task should run. Click next. So here you'll be finding the inode parameters that you have created in the mapping. Clicking on the first icon will give you an option to edit the inode parameter. Clicking on this icon will reset the inode parameter value to the default value. Click next. Here you can schedule the mapping task. Click finish to save the mapping task. Next, create a similar mapping to the first mapping. Add a source and a target and an expression. So here, create another inode parameter to store the value that should be carried from the first task to the second task. Make sure to have the data type similar to that of the first one. In the expression, create a new field and add an expression by storing the inode parameter created in the second mapping. Validate the expression that you have added and click OK. Create another mapping task for this mapping. Once both mapping tasks have been created, click on new and create a task flow. Here, add the data task object in between the start and end of the task flow. In the first data task, click on the data task tab and select the first data task that has been created. Click on select to add the data task. Then click on data task 2 and select the second mapping data task. So now our job is to pass the inode parameter from data task 1 to data task 2. So Click on the input fields in the data task 2. Click on this plus icon and select the inode parameters of data task 2. So now you get an option to edit. Click on the edit. Click on the field and select the field. So for this we are passing the inode parameter from data task 1. Expand the data task 1. Expand inode parameters. Here you will find the inode parameter that you have created in the data task 1. Click on the inode parameter and click OK. Now the value from the inode parameter of data task 1 will be passed down to the inode parameter of data task 2. So now save the task flow and run the task flow. Click in my jobs to view the progress of the task flow. So now the task flow has started processing.
wait until the task flow completes. Now, now both the data tasks have finished processing. Let's take a look on the outputs that we have added in the targets. This file is the first target that we have added in data task 1. Since we have added the set count variable, the, vari the numbers have incremented by 1. Now, this is the output from the data task 2's target. So here you can see the values have continued from 4 and has incremented to 5 and progressed till 8. So this concludes the demo. For further information, refer the following KBs. We would love to hear from you. You can send your feedback to support videos at informatica.com or tag us in Twitter at InfaSupport. Thank you. Have a good day.